Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be another entry into my Figma series. With my recent switch over to Figma as my design tool of choice, I've really been digging into the plugin world in Figma and found five of them that are pretty useful to me in my day-to-day -day workflows. And I wanted to share those with you here today. Let's get into it. First plugin up today is Microsoft Content Reel. And sorry for all the light on my face. Unfortunately, this is just uh, kind of a downside of Figma not having dark mode. Their website doesn't have dark mode. Their application doesn't have dark mode. So sorry for all the glare on my glasses. But this is a pretty useful plugin that I have came across from Microsoft. It's great to see these bigger publisher names getting into the plugin game for Figma. And then if we open up Figma here, so what this plugin does is essentially allows you to replace images, replace text, replace blocks of, of body copy with just fake data. So a lot of times as UX designers, UI designers, we are needing to quickly fill out a design or a wireframe with some names and some avatars, some images, phone numbers, addresses, things like that. And this plugin really helps out with that and makes that process much, much quicker. So we're here on the Figma stage. And as an example, I have also, by the way, included this little uh, keyboard tracker down here. So you're able to see all of the keyboard commands that I'm pressing. So you can kind of level up on your keyboard shortcut game as well. It's a big tip that I love to give to new designers is use as many keyboard shortcuts as you possibly can. So uh, we're here today looking at the um, this kind of generic layout here. And we have just three avatar images and three chunks of text. And you can get to your plugins if you're not familiar with this by right clicking, going to plugins, and then we can go to content reel. And it's nice with uh, Figma plugins, they can be persistent in your interface and kind of pop out over your design. So here you can see that it's just persistent over the interface and I can just leave this here to always be open and kind of quickly fill out my designs. So with this, what you can do is select multiple areas that you want to use avatars and click the avatar button. That's all you need to do. So you can see here now, it's just pre-filling this with some images that I can use for user avatars. You can cycle through this. There's, I don't know, 20 images in here. Hopefully they add more on, but this is really just meant to be temporary placeholder information anyway. And then you can also do the same here with name. So let's go full name, Albert Jacob Guy. Of course, not quite matching up here with the gender, but uh, you get the point. You can kind of cycle through this, or you can just click on an individual one and change that to make sure that it's matching the image. You can do this with addresses as well, which is nice. So US full address, so you have that pre-filling, and then you can also do it with phone numbers. So a lot of times, you know, as designers, we're just needing to fill these out really quickly. You know, I've spent probably hundreds of hours on this in my career where I just sit here and try to come up with creative names and creative addresses. And then, you know, I might do one, two, three, anywhere street for Jacob here, but then come down to the next avatar and you're like, well, what do I do now? Three, four, five, anywhere. It just, it's a lot of wasted time. And as designers, we're really trying to be as efficient as possible. So a tool like this just helps us level up our skills and create these designs and wireframes and mockups without needing to worry about what content to fill them with. Next plugin up is Lorem Ipsum. And this is something as UX designers, UI designers, we are constantly doing is just filling out chunks of text in a design or a mock-up or a wireframe in order to give the wireframe or the design more feel for what the actual end result might look like. To date, I was just using either the Lorem Ipsum plugin that I just shared for Chrome in the, one of my last videos, which is great, but you have to kind of get out of context. You have to go to Chrome, you have to copy it, you might be in Chrome, you might see a Facebook notification, all of a sudden you're down a rabbit hole and you're off of your design. So this is nice that it's in Figma and pretty easy to use because it keeps us inside of Figma. So same thing with this, we launched this just like all the other plugins in Figma, right click, Lorem Ipsum, and it brings up this little interface here. And you can generate words, sentences, or paragraphs. So I can do two paragraphs, generate, fills the box, very nice. Uh, you can do words, you can do entire chunks of, oh, I have this close after generating text. So you wanna keep that uh, unchecked if you do wanna keep this persistent in your interface. Uh, the nicest thing about this plugin though is you can just hit auto generate and this will fill the available space in the container you have selected. And a lot of times when I go onto the Lorem Ipsum website or I use the Chrome plugin, 
I just randomly select a chunk that I think might fit my container. So then I come back into my design and I'm like, oh, that's not long enough. So now I need to copy it, but now it's duplicated here and it looks kind of repetitive. So then I might have to sit here and delete stuff so it doesn't look quite as repetitive, starts with different words and things like that. But the nice thing about this plugin, select your container, auto generate, and it fills it for you. So check this one out when you're doing your next set of wireframes or mockups to kind of help fill out your content without needing to go to another website and copy and paste. Moving right along here, next plugin up is Find and Replace. And this one is a time saver. So when I found this, it was kind of one of those like aha moments. I was so happy to find this because this is something that I constantly run into. If you don't have components in your design and maybe you just have a bunch of different buttons or a bunch of different texts or titles that you need to change all at once, this tool can be an absolute lifesaver. So we right click on here and then we go to find and replace. And what you can do is begin typing here. There is only two P's in apply. It finds it for you. And let's say we wanna replace it with go, replace all, done. So this can be a huge time saver, especially if you have a design where you have uh, 20, 30 different mocks as part of a larger design and you need to change a button or you need to change out a title or a logo or something like that. You can do that. So very helpful. And you can also just right click on an individual piece of text itself. Go to plugins, go to find and replace and it will pre-fill it for you. So kind of a power tip there. And last thing I wanted to show here is layer name. So Figma does a good job of trying to auto name layers for you, and it, it does a pretty decent job at that. But a lot of times we want to go in and change our layer names. So let's say we want to change out frame for artboard, replace all, and you can see it does it all in one nice, quick action, which saves a ton of time and can be a big lifesaver on these larger projects. Next plugin up is the Unsplash plugin, and this is a really popular website that a lot of designers and artists use to fill out their designs with high res images. Some of these are commercial, some of these are personal. Uh, you can read about that on the Unsplash usage rights page, but it'll tell you exactly how you can use these. But this is a very popular website that a lot of people use to fill out their designs and you don't have to go into Google images and try to find high resolution enough for ones that are PNGs or JPEGs, like this has it all for you, so super nice. Uh, so you can see here I've searched for kittens and it returns just a bunch of different kitten images in portrait and landscape. Nice mix of different colors and designs and looks. Uh, also has the photographer that took the picture here, which is nice. So you can attribute them in your designs if you like as well. But if we come back here to the Figma interface and let's hit R, draw a rectangle. And we'll go to plugins, go to unsplash. And again, it pops up that nice persistent panel over here. So if you have a bunch of different squares, circles, whatever, you can uh, quickly kind of fill these out without the plugin closing. So that's nice. So here, if we go to kittens, we're gonna see all of those same images returned here, which is really cool. It's definitely the same database as the website. So you don't need to worry about getting just a subset of images here. This is the full database, so very cool. Then you click on that and it will pre-fill your given container with that image. Super cool. And you can randomize this. So if you just wanna randomize something uh, to fill it out with whatever, you can do that. And you can also come in here and use different categories. So say we want to do portraits and it's running a little slow today. I believe this is the Unsplash website running slow, not my computer, but yeah, it gives you your image here. And then you can just kind of cycle through them by clicking again and again and again. So you could use this kind of similar to the Microsoft Content Reel plugin if you wanted to use this for your avatars, or you can use this for just background imagery or patterns or subtle design treatments in your uh, mockups or your wireframes. So very cool. Last plugin in the list is Remove BG. And this is actually a tool that I covered on one of my other design tools videos. I'll make sure to link that at the end of this video so you can check it out. But this is something that I use quite frequently on YouTube thumbnails just to remove myself from my background and then put it on top of something else. But I'll also find a lot of instances where maybe I'm building a shoe app and I wanna do a mock-up of some shoes on top of my design. This is a great way to remove those backgrounds. And I do believe it uses machine learning, so kind of a cool cutting edge technology, and it does a great job overall of removing backgrounds. So if we close the website up, 
And we come in here, I have an image that I actually downloaded from the Unsplash plugin. And this can often be a pretty complicated image to remove backgrounds. A lot of small hairs in here, small little details. And you can do this inside of Photoshop, which is kind of the more traditional way of doing this, but that can take a lot of extra time. And sometimes you have to get in and really get in with fine, small tools to remove some of this stuff. I know that Photoshop has some better tools nowadays to remove these, but I still think this is a much quicker and easier method to do so. Click on our image remove BG. Now I do want to call out here that it does require an API key. You do need to log into the website, create an account, and then set an API key or get your API key so you can bring it back here and set it inside of Figma. Uh, so just a little extra step there you need to take. Run it. There you go. Backgrounds removed. And you can see it's done a pretty darn good job. Uh, this machine learning stuff kind of blows my mind. I mean, it's removed all of these extra little spaces in the background without removing the hair. So works pretty well and you can see if we put a image background here make it green just to really stand out you can see that it's done a great job so this keeps you inside of figma great tool overall but it's always nice to stay inside of figma again so we're not off in the browser potentially getting uh, our attention taken away on something like twitter instagram and here we go so yeah check it out and that's all i had for today hopefully you enjoyed this video and you can use some of these plugins in your day-to-day -day workflows i know that since i found some of these like content reel and lorb ipsum it's really helped speed up my design workflows and just save me time from going to the browser getting distracted and really staying inside of figma and focused on the design at hand I know there's a lot of other plugins out there. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's any favorites that you have and you're a Figma master. Definitely wanna see those. I'm gonna cover more of these on the channel, but these were kind of the first five that I found useful to me in my current design workflow. If you did like the video, make sure that you give me a like on the video. Really appreciate that. And comment below. Let me know uh, what you thought of the video if you wanna see other plugins covered in the future. And make sure that you like and subscribe and hit the bell if you wanna be notified of future videos in this series, the Figma series, as well as others. Thanks for joining me again today, and I'll see you in the next video.